guys, I'm Jake. Welcome to Lyft. We're so glad you guys were able to make it tonight. We are looking forward to the community um, that you guys will get to have this semester in your individual small groups. Uh, remember to be respectful to your leaders and your other peers by staying off your phones and being respectful. Um, this is going to be an awesome year and I just want to be the first one to welcome you to Lyft. And here are some others who are going to welcome you to Lyft. Welcome 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 to Lyft. Leaders, right now, send me a text message of who is in attendance. Who is in your small group tonight? Thank you. Hey. Welcome, Welcome to, to the Lyft Show. Show. We're so glad you're joining us, whether you're online or in person. I'm Presley. I'm Macy. And I'm Rachel. We'd love to get you a mix if it can be online or with a small group link. And this video is partly sponsored by Sonic. You can find the Daily Scripture Challenge on page 13 of your mix. Now, open your Bibles and get ready to read with the coolest intern, Romans 12, 1 through 2, the message version. <laughs> so here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for Him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what He wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. <laughs> hey guys, today we'll be playing a game between these two contestants, and it's going to be called Spill or Fill, and every after every question we'll be putting something gross in this blender, and whoever loses has to drink it. Over in this corner we have Will the Ice Stone Stomach Champion! Written. First question. What is Olivia Rodrigo's new song called? No. Driver's license. Yes. yes and going into the blender is some amazing mustard. We gotta be very nice with this. <laughs> question. What is Olivia's hit song from High School the Musical, the musical, the series? Ooh. Any guesses? <laughs> It was all I want. All, all I, I want, want is love. French fried onions. Yummy. Generous helping. <laughs> okay. Who wrote Lie, Lie, Lie? That Joshua guy? Yeah! yeah! That doesn't count. That the next item is, is some Fritos. Fritos. Next question. Who is the blonde girl that Olivia talks about in Driver's License? <laughs> Sabrina. Yeah! Okay, we will now be adding... Can you get your last name? A... Nope. Carpenter. Generous. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of songs. I'm winning. Okay, next <laughs> question. Oh, bottle. Oh, don't! Yes. <laughs> Finish the lyrics. Red lights, stop signs. I was told this was going to be about the book of Jonah. <laughs> <laughs> we will be adding some ramen noodles. Some noodle. ramen noodles. Yeah, we have to add Are this. Are we adding the sauce? <laughs> and yes. add this too. I mean, you okay, it like as ramen she noodles. adds that, the next question is, what is I like in Spanish? <laughs> yeah! Me gusto. Yeah, your boy's fluent. <laughs> Nasty looking pop to hearts. Oh, yes. Oh, These are the great. s'mores kind. This is oh. really looking like my breakfast every morning. For the next question, the score is Queen B over here with three points. points. And will the Stone Stomach Woo! Champion over here with two. two. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> Gets this one right, wins, and the other person has to drink this. The TikTok app. What are its colors? Uh, green and red and blue. <laughs> blue and red. Yeah! Oh, we're blending, man. What the fuck is that color? <laughs> oh. It is. <laughs> okay, let's go. Oh gosh, I feel so. 
so bad. I was rooting for you. Hey. Okay. It's choking. Choking. <laughs> yeah. Chuck. 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 Every life is a story being woven together. If you think about it, all of our lives are stories in progress. Every image we post, every message we send, every decision, every thought, a thread in the fabric that makes up our lives. When we are young, we just believe the story as it's told to us. But somewhere along the way, we wonder what was, what is, what is to come. The beauty is when we collectively come together, individual stories colliding to an epic novel, God shows up and in through us. God shows off, his glory undeniably revealed. God shows out through us to nations. We stand united, not in isolation, but a hope-filled community. Wherever you are, you belong. You matter. You are loved. Welcome, whether in-house or online, we are so glad you guys are joining us to worship. We encourage you to just surrender everything to our good and loving and graceful God who just wants to be with you. Now, please worship with us.
just nothing better than you. Nothing at all. And God, this week I know one thing that you're showing us is that our repentance leads us, our, our regret, and our when we come to that place where we recognize the shame that we have, and then we recognize that Jesus took that, not so we could continue to carry it and live in that shame, and live in the worry, and in the fear, and hide from you. Instead, he calls us in that place where we can just, we can come in that place out of the grave and into the garden. We can see that garden of beauty that you made, God. We can see that place. And God, just show us to want nothing else. We want nothing from the grave, God, but we want the garden and we want you, God. That's what we want. I pray that you would just show that to us in this worship. You would show that to our hearts. You would show that to us in radical ways right now in this worship. That's your presence alone, God. Let's lean into that right here, right now. In your prayer. Amen. I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sing another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. And I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. Caught up in this hole.
nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just, I just want nothing else. Nothing else, Jesus, nothing else will do. Oh, I just want nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just, I just want nothing else, nothing else. so much that we can come together tonight and be in our small groups and talk to people about what you have done and how you've helped us through these times that we've struggled through and we all have struggled through but we will get through it together amen redemption the action of being saved and the process of being saved from error. Errors, as we all know, are unavoidable. If you think you have no plank, think on the last person who hurt you. And at their worst, you wanted the worst for them. Don't be so convinced of yourself. Don't be so convinced that they deserve hurt and you deserve freedom. Don't be so convinced that you were beyond reproach. Who have you hurt? Who thought the same of you? And maybe you didn't know. We hurt each other so easy. I say it again, but with a heart of redemption. Don't be so convinced of yourself. Hopefully for a moment, you were convicted humble before the heart of God and the greatness you thought of yourself was flattened. Don't take yourself to the place where you are worthless and evil, like they are worthless and evil. Instead, you are an image God made worthy of dying for. And forget an error that we love because he loved. So receive fully and the world can fully know redemption. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Two words that have massive amounts of power. I want you to think for a moment about the last time you said the words, I'm sorry. For some of you, this, this may be an easy exercise to do. You may be like, man, I remember the last time I said I'm sorry. It was, it was literally just five minutes ago, an hour ago, I don't, before I came to church tonight. But for others of you, remembering the last time you said, I'm sorry, it might be difficult. It could be a difficult thing to think back upon. But seriously, I want you to think about this question. When was the last time you said, I'm sorry? Who'd you say it to? Was it your mom or your dad? Was it your boyfriend or your girlfriend? Was it a close friend of yours? 
What'd you say it for? Why did you say, why did you have to say I'm sorry? What led to you having to say, I'm sorry? Did you do something that you knew you weren't supposed to do? Did you say something that was hurtful? There are some statements in the English language that, that just carry with it immense amounts of power and force. And sometimes that force can be incredibly hurtful. Statements like, I hate you, you're fired, or I'm breaking up with you. Obviously, these are impactful statements as well. But clearly, these statements, I hate you, you're fired, I'm breaking up with you, these statements carry with them a different type of power. Power that wields pain, disappointment, hurt. The fact of the matter is, there are words and there are statements that just carry with them certain levels of power. For whatever reason, whenever I say the words, I'm hungry, that doesn't cause anyone to feel any sort of way, except for those of you out there right now who are also hungry. And, and those of you who are, when I say I'm hungry, you're thinking, man, me too. When are, when are we going to go get some dinner? What is for dinner? But I'm sorry. Man, it's different. Let me ask you again to think back on when the last time you said I'm sorry. Did you mean those words when you said them? Did you mean it when you said the words, I'm sorry? Did you really mean that you were bothered by what it was you had done or what it was you had said, that you felt a certain level of regret or remorse? See, here's the interesting thing about the human brain. We understand the power of our words. We may not acknowledge it. We may not say that we understand the power of our words, but we do. We understand the power of our words. We know how powerful certain statements can be. And sometimes, because we know the power of our words, we say them simply to wield the power that those words contain, the power that comes with that statement. But the reality is we don't actually mean those words. We just want the power that comes with those words. Here's what I mean by that. Have you ever said you're sorry just so your parents will leave you alone and they'll move on from whatever it was that had happened? Have you ever said you're sorry just so your friend will talk to you again? Have you ever said I'm sorry just so your boyfriend or your girlfriend that you broke up with will get back together with you? Do you get my point? We have all used the power of the words that we say just to simply get something out of it. But ultimately, if we are honest, we may not actually mean the words that we said. So what do I say all of this? What am I, what am I talking about? Well, tonight here at Lyft, we're talking about repentance, the word repentance. And for most of us, this is probably a word that we have heard many times before. And maybe if you grew up in church, maybe you didn't, but you probably still heard this, this term. But if you grew up in church, it's probably a word, a churchy word that you've heard a lot about, repentance. And for most of us, when we hear the word repentance, we think of the words, I'm sorry. Maybe not exactly those words, but probably something along the lines of, man, I'm sorry repentance. And to be super clear, repentance absolutely does involve a certain level of I'm sorry. It does. Don't get me wrong. Repentance involves I'm sorry. And I know that here in your discussions, in your small groups here in just a minute, if you look in the mix, it's going to ask you to, to look up and to define the word repentance in the dictionary. But I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to skip ahead. I'm going to do that, that part for you. You don't even have to worry about that part. Here's, here's what it means. Repentance as defined by the English dictionary means regret for any past action. Regret for any past action. In other words, at least defined by our dictionary, by the English dictionary, it kind of means, I'm sorry. I'm going to tell you something that's going to blow your mind. The dictionary is wrong. 
The dictionary is wrong. Okay, it's not totally wrong, but it's partly wrong. See, I'm sorry is actually only half of what repentance actually means. It's only half of it. It's only part of what repentance actually means. I'm sorry is actually the second half of what repentance means. And the reality is that in typical kind of American Western culture society, the people who defined this word for us in the dictionary, they actually skipped over the first part of what repentance means, which is the harder part of repentance. They went straight to the easy part. Let me show you what I mean. Have you ever heard of the story in the Bible that's often referred to as the prodigal son or the lost son? It's this great story in the Bible. In fact, I'm going to read it to you a little bit of it, just a brief part of it here in just a minute. But it's this great story about this son who goes to his dad and he basically convinces his dad to give him the money, the inheritance that he would receive once his dad had passed away. He actually get that money now while his dad is still alive. And he convinces his dad to do this. But then he takes his money and he goes and he finds out that money is not endless. We've all figured this out probably. If you've ever sort of ran out of money before that your parents might have given you, find out that money is not endless endless. And that's exactly kind of where I want to pick up in this story. He takes his dad's money, he goes and he finds out that the money that he's been given, his inheritance, is not endless. And we pick up in Luke chapter 15, verse 14, it says this, after he, talking about the son who had received his inheritance, after he spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and he hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. So he's gone from having a whole bunch of money, his dad's money, the inheritance, living it, spending it up, doing whatever he wanted, to going and having to feed pigs because he's found out that the money is not endless and now he's in need. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and he went to his father. There's one statement, one just like six words in this passage that I just read to you that defines repentance for us. At least the hard part of repentance that our English dictionary just left out. One phrase. I want to read it to you. Luke 15 verse 17 says this. When he came to his senses. When he came to his senses. He said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. See, here's what I want you to understand. This story doesn't just jump from this guy taking his inheritance, taking the money and, and spending it all, and then going home to his dad and just saying, sorry, dad, and his dad forgiving him and, and everything being okay. Oftentimes when we read this story, we think that's just sort of how this works, that he goes, he gets his inheritance, he goes and he spends it all, and he goes home and says, sorry, dad. But that's not actually the way that the story reads at all. See, the truth of the matter is we think that's how repentance works, right? Just go home and just say, I'm sorry. We see it as simply saying, I am sorry so that things can get back to the way they need to be. Things can get back to being good. But that's not repentance at all. Simply using the powerful statement of, I'm sorry, to get what you want. And ultimately, that is a dangerous thing that leads to probably even worse problems for you down the line. In this story, it says he came to his senses. Some translations, maybe your translation says it this way. It says he came to himself. 
he came to himself, meaning his eyes were opened to the wrong that he had done, and he felt differently about it. His eyes had been opened to the wrongs that he had done, and he felt differently about it. In fact, the literal translation of the word repentance actually means to change your mind. To change your mind. Here's what it means. It means that if I was heading in this direction right here, I was going in this direction 60 miles per hour, Repentance is not just simply stopping at the stop sign going this direction and apologizing for going 60 miles per hour in that direction. That's not what repentance is. Repentance is stopping at the stop sign and realizing that I was going 60 miles per hour in the wrong direction and choosing to make a right-hand turn and begin going in this direction direction instead. What does that mean for you? Well, I can't answer that specifically for you, but sort of in a general sense, here's what it means. It means two things. First, it means that choosing to follow after Jesus requires repentance. It it requires that you have changed your mind about following after the things of this world and confessed that to Jesus and decided to follow after him instead. You have changed your mind, you have changed directions, and you're you're going in a different direction. And maybe for you, that's where repentance begins tonight. Just simply changing your mind and choosing to follow Jesus instead. And if that's you, if that's you tonight, if that's where repentance begins, man, I want you to know, do not leave this building before you've talked to me or your small group leader or another adult, because we would love to talk to you about that. The second thing is this, is that if you're, maybe you're already following after Jesus. Maybe you've kind of entered into that first repentance. Repentance for you tonight might simply mean that Jesus is impressing something on your heart that you need to have a change of heart about. Maybe it's a struggle that you've been hiding. Maybe it's something that that you've been doing that you know for a fact you shouldn't be doing. Maybe it's a conversation that you need to have with someone about something that you have said or done. It's not just going and saying, I'm sorry. Yes, Sure, those are powerful words, and those words, I'm sorry, man, they have an impact. But I am sorry without the change of mind is ultimately, and ultimately that's just self-indulgence. It's just getting past it so you can get more of what it is that you want. I want to challenge you with this thought. For the son in the story that we read tonight, it says he came to his senses. I want to ask you tonight, is there an area in your life where you need to come to your senses, where you need to repent and confess and move in a different direction? Let me pray for us tonight. Jesus, we love you. We are so thankful that your word is clear if we'll just look at it. Would you please allow us the opportunity to repent if we need to and to move in a different direction? Reveal that to us. Speak that to us tonight. Pray these things in Jesus' name.